evening everybody. Can on bike here. Just out for an evening ride. It's been blooming hot today. My thermometer said 27 degrees C, which in some places in the world is probably considered cool. But for somebody set up for life in Yorkshire, that's roasting hot. So I thought what better way to cool down and get a bit of wind through your wheels. Red light still help me. Yeah, what a way to cool down as the planet warms up. <laughs> I um, did my last video where I was talking about um, electric bikes and how quite a large percentage of people said that they would stop riding altogether if they couldn't have a bike with an internal combustion engine. I have to say that the numbers that came out of the survey that prompted that video I don't think anybody believes them from uh, from what I've seen. I certainly don't believe that they're representative. They were by MAG, which if you're not in the UK is a motorcycle action group and I don't think the MAG demographic uh, is the same as the general demographic. You know, the majority of people on small bikes uh, going to work and back are not MAG members, I would, I would hazard a guess. And certainly the comments on the video played that out, that there were very few people that said that they would give up motorcycling just because they had to have electric. Plenty of people have said they would prefer a petrol, and I'm in that camp myself, uh, certainly at the moment anyway, until the electrics get a lot better in terms of range and price, uh, and uh, the infrastructure is there for recharging. But I saw another story the other day and I thought I'd just have a quick comment on that one because maybe it's the saving grace for that 30 some percent who would give up. Apparently, and I'll put a link to the short article below, if I find any more links I may well add those as well, but apparently there are several companies now working on synthetic petrol and the idea is that they would extract carbon dioxide from the air react it with hydrogen to get a hydrocarbon like petrol and then presumably they would put additives in as well so it's not really perfectly clean but um, certainly it would be not emitting carbon dioxide when you burnt it or rather it would be emitting carbon dioxide when you burnt it unless you've decatted your bike <laughs> um, but the carbon dioxide it would be emitting in a kind of standard engine with a catalytic converter would only be the same carbon dioxide or the same amount of carbon dioxide that you took out of the air in the first place thus carbon neutral I wonder what effect this would have if this technology actually takes off I mean presumably the energy that goes into extracting the CO2 from the air would have to be electrical so I guess in a way it would be an alternative to batteries, wouldn't it? Instead of taking electricity out of the grid and storing it in a battery, you'd effectively be taking electricity out of the grid and storing it in synthetic petrol. And if that electricity was generated in a carbon neutral way as well, or a, I guess the electricity would be carbon negative, it's only when you burnt the fuel it would go neutral again. But yeah, if it was a wind power, like that little thing over there, or solar or tidal or one of the other so-called green electricity generation techniques I would imagine that's actually a good answer to the problem of us emitting too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere I do wonder whether governments would already be uh, already being on the track of phasing out petrol would actually consider it or not or would just carry on down the path that already set off of saying you've got to go electric even if even if this is a wonder fuel that somehow is carbon negative which it wouldn't be but even if it was <coughs> the uh, the government certainly the western governments are quite often like liners aren't they or oil tankers <laughs> ironically enough 
in that once they've set a course it's very hard to get them to change that course but it does kind of hold up that little beacon of hope that maybe maybe these gas guzzling little machines could last that little bit longer my advice would be to the people who are making this synthetic petrol is get an MP or two on your payroll that seems to work wonders <laughs> anyway have a look at the article let me know what you think I'm sure there's something that I haven't thought of that will also be a negative other than the fact there would be other additives going into the fuel that are needed for an engine that no doubt cause pollution as well um, but I, I would imagine that would be less so with a pure manufactured fuel than when one that's come out of the ground and had to be purified to a certain level with some impurities left maybe it would lead to cleaner burning and you'd actually get an efficiency bonus too so anyway, there's, there's my little bit uh, of, of potentially good news for the week and my vote for this special form of liquid electricity storage <coughs> coughing away, I've not got Covid I've breathed in a fly I've become temporarily non-vegetarian maybe that's why I had to offset it by talking about green issues <laughs> anyway, back to my cooling down thanks for watching everyone Ride safe, and I'll talk to you all again soon.